Joining us today is Farah Bors Gadar, also known as FG. Farah Bors is the William Schreier Professor of Global Management Policies at the Smeal College and founding director of the Center for Global Business. And he is the author of 15 books, including Global Tectonics, What Every Business Needs to Know. The reason we called it Global Tectonics was because like the tectonics of the Earth, they move very, very slowly but at some point they really shake the foundation of you doing business. One of the largest uh, and most impactful uh, tectonics or trends was the demographics. Um, for, so for example, we were looking at the demographics in, in, for example, areas of the world where women are not having as many kids, Southern Europe, Italy, Spain, Greece, and uh, the Far East, Japan, Korea, et cetera. What is, the, what is the implication of not having that many children? Is basically you get old, the population get old, et cetera. On the other hand, you've got areas of the world like North Africa, the Middle East, and Southern Republics of Russia where you're having a lot of kids. And if you're having a lot of kids, then these basically, the, you know, they've already been born. They're sort of in the pipeline, so to speak. And they will grow up and they need jobs. And if you don't have jobs for them, uh, you're going to have all sorts of difficulties. So, in fact, in 2005, we anticipated that the large birth rate in the North Africa, Middle East region, once the children get to the age where they need jobs, is going to be uh, somewhat insta unstable politically. And a lot of people are moving, uh, migrating uh, to uh, urban lifestyle away from the rural lifestyle. Right. Now, that is, in fact, very significant, uh, not so much in the developed world, not in uh, you know, Europe, the U.S., and, and Japan, but in the emerging economies where everybody's going into the, in the major cities. And, uh, in fact, of the top ten largest cities in the world in five years, uh, really, only two of them, the Greater Metropolitan in New York and Greater Metropolitan in Tokyo, will be on the list. The rest of them are in China, India, you know, Nigeria, and, you know, Brazil, uh, Egypt, etc. And now, in some cases, the infrastructure of the cities are being built, and, and read into that some of the Chinese cities. In fact, in the other places, the population is coming in the cities, but the infrastructure is not being built, which is, again, another disconcerting factor. It also affects what these uh, countries uh, have to do with regard to farming, agriculture, that right. sort of thing, because people are leaving. So right. how is that adjustment being made? Well, if you look at the resources, which is what we looked at in, uh, extensively, and break it down into fuel, food, and water, um, there is actually a substantial amount of uh, fuel around whether it's gas or oil or coal. Uh, the question is whether we're making enough investments to make sure that the amount of energy that we need are going to come into the marketplace at a reasonable price. However, the water issue is really, really a major, major problem. And in all the studies that we reviewed and the interviews that we took, that we, we undertook, basically water is going to be an issue. Water desalination, water purification, water management is going to be a critical issue. Um, we are using roughly 50% of the fresh water that's available to us at any time, and we're going to have to double that in the next 10, 15 years. So that's going to be a big issue. Nanotechnology. Nanotechnology is its infancy. This rearranging of atoms to... Absolutely. To yeah. rearranging atoms yeah. that are used to build just about anything to maximize their potential. Right. Right. I mean, that's exactly right, Philip. I mean, you see it right now in the way we do stuff, and really, again, very cursory stuff like making the bumper of your car stronger or making an airplane that's light and that. But as you move forward, you can actually make things that are substantially different. They can have nanotube structures that basically absorb electromagnetic waves in the carbon nanotube structure, mm -hmm. and the waves go into these structures and can go around the top a subject. Now, stop and think. Light is an electromagnetic wave. So if light comes in, goes into these nanotubes, and goes around me, if you're standing over there, you don't see me. You see you. I've just become invisible. If I'm a company man and I'm mm -hmm. coming to you and I say, FG, what should I be looking for and focusing on? Uh, what do you think I should be looking for? Well, it, it, that's a very interesting question because it really depends on the company. Mm -hmm. If you look at these 12 trends, some of them are very, very important if you're an IT company. 
Some of them are very, very important if you're a defense company. Some of them are very important if you're in biotechnology or a pharmaceutical industry. The book is Global Tectonics, What Every Business Needs to Know. Farah Boris Ghadar, along with Eric Peterson. Terrific read, tremendous amount of information uh, put together very efficiently with uh, lots of graphs that uh, really give a big scope of how far we've come and where the trends might be going. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Philip. It's a pleasure being with you. Thank <laughs> you.